Welcome to the Pernell Watches and Wonders 2021 keynote session. I am Maurizio Mazzocchi, the CEO of Pernell, and today we will go through a watchmaking journey uh, that will start with my own experience in the watchmaking industry. We will talk about Pernell, the present and the future of the brand. To begin with, I would like to tell you about uh, the question I am often asked regarding my passion for watchmaking. And it's funny because it's more than a passion. Watchmaking to me is my life. It's been my entire life. I am born in Neuchâtel, in the cradle of the watchmaking industry. And uh, as early as I can remember, as a boy, a young boy, I was four years old, I remember, uh, my mom had a watch uh, desk in the bedroom and she was making movements. I remember these, mo these uh, times very well. And to me, that was the, the first experience of the watchmaking. We were in the early 70s. Watchmaking was booming. People were working from home. And this is just to tell you how much I've been uh, into the watch industry from my first for my very first uh, age and early days. Then as a teenager, my dad went on to the United States where he was hired, not knowing one word of English, as the Hoyer West Coast manager for, uh, for the US market. I followed him. Later on, uh, first it was in California, and later on he became president in the East Coast. And I remember clearly also doing fair trade shows, and um, working with him day in, day out. And that was a great uh, bath for me into the, into the watchmaking as well. Um, I remember clearly also my first check as 17 years old working in, the, in the, what is today the LVMH headquarter. Uh, back then it was Hoyer only. Uh, and uh, these, uh, Experience taught me that the watch industry was really a passion, yes, but it was even more than that. And I asked myself, well, is this work? It was fun, actually. I loved doing it. I loved working uh, in the watch industry. I love I love to see the product. I love to see the people. Uh, and I said, one day, this is what I want to do. Uh, then uh, in the United States, I went to uh, the university and also in the university campus. I remember selling watches, my roommates coming in the middle of the night asking for a price, asking for a watch. Uh, well, it was great, great memories when I go back. And uh, in my early age, uh, I can tell that, I can, I can tell you my, my, uh, my watchmaking, the watchmaking industry was all over me, in my family, from morning to night, breakfast, lunch and dinner, watches, watches, watches. Uh, after university, I had my first real work, and I must thank uh, Mr. Jean-Claude Biver, who hired me as my first, as his first employee for the new team of Omega at the product development. And of course, that was a big, I thought I knew watches because that was 10 years already that more or less I was in watches, but I realized that I still had a lot to learn. And um, it was a very, very interesting, important, inspiring experience with Mr. Biver. Um, I remember working on product and uh, him coming to me and he saw things so fast, so quickly uh, that I said, one day I want to have that eye. One day I want to be as good as he is. And he inspired me throughout my, uh, my years in the product. And one day he said, Mr. Mazzocchi, you know here, you are at the University of Watchmaking. I said, oh, wow, university again, between me, I was telling me, you know, I, was, I really wanted to start work and finished with university, but no, I was back in university. And it's true, there were great lessons day in, day out, till, uh, till one day, I guess I was a good student and he, uh, he sent me to, uh, to Italy to become uh, Omega and Blancpain director for the Italian market. And, uh, and there, there was six more years of experience with him. So I worked with Mr. Beaver for eight years. He definitely uh, gave me a great background, uh, an experience of, this, uh, of the industry that uh, we love so much. 
And go, going back to Italy, it was, it was a great, great memories. It was the time of uh, the first James Bond movie, the Cindy Crawford, the Michael Schumacher, the first boutique uh, that was open in Milan. And I remember, I remember this uh, so, so very well. I also remember with Blancpain, and this is even more remarkable, the first 1735, it was a complication, the highest complication of, of Blancpain, of the group back then. And uh, I managed to, to, to sell the watch through a, a retailer in Italy. And uh, I remember that for a couple of days, Blancpain, the small Blancpain in the, watch in the Swatch group, became the, 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 the best sales of the month. And I had made my budget for a couple of months with that one watch. And, uh, and, and Blancpain was on top of uh, all the sales of the entire group in Italy for a couple of days. And uh, that's when I said, hmm, it's better to sell one watch at one million than one million watches at one dollar. That stayed in me also a little bit. And uh, today it's part of my, my philosophy for, for watchmaking. Um, another great mentor was uh, Mr. Late Nicholas Hayek, senior, um, who taught me, he taught me a lot of things. He taught me about management. He taught me about giving, uh, following his emotion and trusting people. I have to tell you, sorry if I spend a little bit more time in, of, of, of my, uh, my personal life, but this is something I have to share with you. I was 28 years old, brand manager of, of uh, Omega and Blancpain, and here I am presenting my first budget in front of Mr. Hayek and their entire group. So you know what a budget presentation is. You have at least 50 people. I was 28. There must have been, there were 50, 60 years old, double my age, no experience. And uh, wow, I was uh, intimidated, of course. So anyway, I prepared my budget and I didn't sleep lo a lot for a couple of days. And uh, I go on my turn and I present my budget. Mr. Hayek was right there. I could, if I did this, I could throw it. It was a huge room, but he was right there, not looking at me. He was looking at his paper, head down. And I was like, wow, that's going to be an interesting presentation. So I start doing my slides. There were s slides back then. So I put my slides in and I talk slides in one, two. And I go in and Mr. Hayek is not looking, not a word. And I was like, wow, this is hard. Uh, I don't know what to expect. I was expecting the worst. And uh, out of the blue, suddenly not raising his head, he was like, still like this. He goes, Mr. Mazzocchi, you all done, thank you. And he looks at me and he goes, I know you're going to do your budget. Thank you. Usually a budget lasts for hours, and that lasted for three or four minutes. And that day I said, wow, that's a great lesson. He, he knows me, of course, but he trusted me. He, 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 he sounded, he heard my emotion that I really wanted to, to do my budget and that I was giving my, my best. And I, I learned that day to not only perform, but to outperform, not to be shy to go where no one dares to go, pushing boundaries. This is something that today I use every day in my work that I apply to, uh, to the present. And that brings me to Pernell. Uh, to me, Pernell is an exceptional experience and it's an opportunity to put into life my long experience in watchmaking and also my vision, my vision of watchmaking. Um, I define my vision and Pernell if you, if I have to uh, do it in three words, I have three words actually that will define our vision. The first is motion. So the motion is described by Leonardo da Vinci as the cause of all matters in life. So if motion is the cause of all life, well, that can be applied to watchmaking. And how is that applied to watchmaking? What is always in motion in a watch? A tourbillon. So the claim only tourbillon is exactly linked to that vision, to the fact that motion is an emotion, that motion is something that 
transfers happiness, life. This is something that I really want to, to do with our watches. I call our watches happy watches. Um, what is a happy watch? A happy watch is something that when you look at it, it gives you pleasure. Uh, and this is the scope of Pernell, and the main word is motion. But there is an, another word. And the second word is simplicity. Simplicity for complication, <laughs> strange. How is that applying to a complicated watch as Pernell? Well, I'll tell you how. Um, simplicity, simplicity means user-friendly. And in today's world, we know well user-friendly and many things are unfriendly when they should be friendly. Well, our watches are really user-friendly. Um, it means that it's easy to wind, easy to read, easy to wear, easy to put on, easy to take out, basically very friendly. And this is what we really want to do with our watches. I, I, I don't want the watch to be intimidated to the customer. Uh, it means, again, the happy watch is also in everyday life, in everyday use, and this is something that we work hard at for, uh, for our watches, for our brand, and this is something that we will stick to, uh, to the future. And again, a complicated movement doesn't mean it has to be complicated to read. So again, we go back to motion, and this is what the, the triple axis tourbillon is all about, and I will get into that later on. Now, in final, the third word to explain Pernell is contemporaneity. What does contemporaneity mean? To me, it means never do something that has been done before. It's too easy. Um, we are about the future. One of our claim is more future than past. What does, how does it apply to, uh, to Pernell? It applies in the fact that, again, even though we take high watch making as a tourbillon that exists since 220 years, but we don't look back, we look into the future. Because what, what is watchmaking today, finally, when, when you look at it? It must be an emotion, and it cannot only be an investment, or it cannot only be something that we want to collect. It must be fun, it must be pleasure, it must be happy. Um, and I learned that with the young generation and the new clients that we have. The average age of our clients are between 20, 25 to 30, 35, extremely young. They don't have the same, they don't have the same vision that we old generation of Swiss watchmakers have. Today, they just want to have fun with their watches. They want to be amazed, they want to look at, they want to explain, they want to show their friend, look how cool that watch, look how fast it goes. Hey, you know my Sferion? Eight seconds it turns. It's like a car going 400 kilometers an hour. This is what our customers want to have today, and we, we um, work every day to, to reach that goal. Um, so you have academic watchmaking, and you have non-academic non watchmaking. This is something where me and Eric Coudray um, are, are aligned, and we have the same vision. When I met Eric, he also he had basically the same understanding of, of watchmaking. Uh, he's into mechanical and he's not so much into complication to make a complication. He, he wants to find speed, he wants to find visual, uh, visual um, performances. So that's how the, the bond between Eric and me uh, really matched and that it's transferred into our triple axis tourbillon, the fastest in the world which is the Sferion. So let me tell you more about the, the Sferion. The Sferion is really a unique watchmaking performance. A cage weighs about 0.79 grams. A drop of water, when you go in a glass like this, a drop of water is two grams. So imagine that the whole Sferion is less than half the weight of a drop of water, and it turns and it lasts for life. Pernell is embarking on a contemporary watch journey. The future of watchmaking for Pernell is emotion at a glance. 
freedom to create, freedom to innovate, and to push the boundaries of performance. Um, this is what Purnell is all about. And I would like to finish with a very, very unique theory of Dostoevsky, who says, beauty will save the world. Thank you for listening. And uh, we will go now into a Q&A session. Thank you. Let's start now with the Q&A session. Thank you for listening to my uh, presentation. I am very happy to uh, answer all the questions. So let's see for the first one. So thank you, technology. Here it is from Joseph. Hello, great to be only colleague. Uh, one question, please. Out of all of the novelties, which was the most challenging? Definitely the escape absolute sapphire. The challenge was double. A, uh, technical, uh, our shape, uh, the escape to shape of the case is, is complex, has different rays, uh, and, and to polish, to polish the, the, the case is very complicated. It's about eight months. Uh, and again, uh, we make everything in Switzerland uh, to find uh, craftsmen in Switzerland that works on sapphire. You don't see that everywhere. It's, um, it's, it's new technologies, but also um, met and, and, and uh, still with the old way of doing crystal and sapphire. So definitely, we are very proud of this uh, novelty. Second question. What is your vision for Pernell in the next 10 years? Wow, 10 years is long. So my, my vision is, is what I tried to explain before. The first is to establish the brand, um, if I can say, as the leader of happy watches. Uh, we want to stay um, and, and to maintain our claim, the mission of only Tourbillon. I would say that's the first, to, to really establish uh, the only brand in the market who only makes tourbillon and that's a, a very important uh, mission and vision that I have and we will uh, work at it every day. Uh, we want to also develop always new movement. Again, that's uh, the, the, in, in 10 years I want to have maybe six, seven, eight movements that will be I don't want to say revolutionary in the market, but that will be at least unique or for, made for the first time. Pernell has to do uh, every, every time something new, just as we have with our Spherion. Um, and then uh, that's, I think that by doing that and expanding in uh, the brand in the market, we will have a brand that will be unique, mixing contemporary, with academic watchmaking revisited in modern way in contemporary. I hope I answered the question. Another question here. Where is the company based production? So the company is based in Geneva. We actually have our offices in Rue du Rhône 80. That's where the corporate office is. And our manufacturing activity is in uh, Vallée de Joux in Valorbe. That's where we, uh, we assemble, mount, QC, and produce all of our watches. Next questions. Uh, next question. How do you define your ladies' pieces collection? How do we define our... So uh, that's an interesting question because we do not really want to do ladies' watches. Uh, as you can see, this watch is, is, is unisex. Uh, it can be worn by ladies, can be worn by a, by a man. Um, we don't want to do a gender. We, we, we're a non-gender brand. I really want to work with that. I have seen too many times ladies buying men's watches, uh, men wanting diamond watches. So I think that that market is slowly, slowly merger, merging. And higher you go in the complication, and, uh, and, and where the movement is really the star, the movement is the watch, then it can apply and it can be attractive for a man or it can be attractive for a lady. Next question. 
So what have you brought in terms of watchmaking to Permel from your past companies? What have I brought in terms of watchmaking to Permel from your past? Well, I've brought, I've brought my vision, I've brought my culture. Uh, I didn't mention before in my, uh, in my presentation, I also worked at Roger Dubuis, which back then was, was uh, also very contemporary. And I was at the beginning of the contemporary vision in 2006 of Roger Dubuis. So that was always in me. I brought that vision and that belief uh, that I have that watchmaking has to look much more into the future than into the past. That, that's what I believe I brought into, into Purnell. Next question. Do you consider Purnell a bespoke watch brand? A bespoke watch brand would be too reductive. Um, no, we are not a, a, a bespoke brand. That would mean we only do on demand. We are not on demand. Uh, we produce, I have my ideas, we have our ideas, our vision. And then of course, clients want to have uh, little details that uh, belongs to them. It could be a, a matching color which matches their car. It could be a, a leather type. It could be a hand color. So we do do bespoke because again, that's kind of a requirement of uh, the level of the market that we are in. And uh, we are proud to be uh, to, to, to answer uh, the demand of our clients. And sometimes the clients challenge us and bring us um, and, and challenges and, and give us ideas that we didn't have. So it's a very, very comfortable and uh, I, I like to be challenged by the customer. But uh, we're not bespoke. We do bespoke upon request. Next question. It's a lot of complication movement. Why are you in tourbillon? Why not minute? Why are you interested in tourbillon and why not in minute repeater? Well, I am, it's not that I am not uh, interested in, in minute repeater. If one day we do a minute repeater, it would be with a tourbillon. But again, um, the brand is about motion, as I said, and motion is emotion. Motion, emotion. What is emotion? Emotion is movement. Emotion is, is, uh, is, is transmitting something. And I believe that the best way to provide emotion in a watch is to have something that moves. Because, wow, it's moving, it's, it's visu visual, it's attractive, it's fun, it's happy. So, so that's why tourbillon because tourbillon is a guarantee, not only of quality, but it's a guarantee that it will be moving, that it will, uh, it will provide emotion. So it doesn't mean that one day we will not do a tourbillon minute repeater. I don't know, it's not in the pipeline, but uh, I am not against minute repeater. I'm, 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 I just don't want to go away from tourbillon. Next question. After all these years in the industry, what keeps you excited about Pernell? What keeps me excited about Pernell is, um, is the vision, is to actually put all my experience that we went through together before uh, into play. It's like you accumulated all the pieces of a puzzle and for the first time the puzzle is in front of me and now I just have to put it all together and it's fun to do because I go into the future, I go from the past. Uh, it's a very comfortable position. Uh, the market is also in a great place, even though COVID doesn't help, but the, the, the way the market, the market is evolving and, and the new generation, that's what I mean by the market, the new generation of customer, uh, thanks to our new communicating tool, we have a wider and wider um, clientele around the world that uh, do love watches, I am personally very uh, optimistic about the watch industry for the future. Uh, but again, it must be the Swiss watch industry. It must be the 100% Swiss watch industry. Uh, we must, as professional of the industry, make a point to really, really uh, be implicated with our suppliers, with our craftsmen, and give them the way to generation after generation uh, keep that beautiful trade of ours in Switzerland. Next question. Do you intend to increase the number of tourbillons when too much started to be too much? Ah, <laughs> well, you know, you have technical, you have technical, how, how can I say, limits. Uh, there is no way 
that we will be able to do more than uh, than than double spherions, and it wouldn't make sense. Uh, a, there wouldn't be space, and I agree that uh, too much can be too much. Um, from two went to one, from two we didn't go to three. I think two spherion is already the maximum, A again for technical reasons. The power is, uh, is very, very high for the double spherions. So we, we are not in, uh, we have plenty of ideas. So uh, creativity is really uh, in us and we will find new ways to, uh, to astonish you in the future with new tourbillons and new ways of interpreting the tourbillon. I hope I answered your question. Next. Why are you developing your movement with Eric Coudray and not another watchmaker? Why? Why not? Um, well, I, I, I wanted to uh, explain that in my, uh, in my presentation before. Eric Coudray uh, shares the same vision. He's more a me micro-mechanical enthusiast than a pure, pure academic watchmaker uh, when what i mean by pure academic watchmaker means to go into a, a minute repeater uh quantum perpetual calendars and and these things is not so much into that is more into how we can find performance that will create emotion and we are in perfect line with eric in that perspective in that objective to find emotion through a movement next question I just want to say that thank you for that fascinating insight into your life and watches. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie. Your presentation was <laughs> fascinating. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it was a great pleasure. Thank you for listening to uh, the Pernell keynote. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you soon.